going to go over some different choices for base coats. I'm going to go over how to make one of those choices of base coats. I have found a new way to make a wash or an antiquing solution. Um, so I'm going to go over that. I'm going to go over some crafting materials that we might need later on in the project if you want to kind of work along with me. Um, and I'm also going to show and tell. Hmm, gotta have a show and tell. Um, I'm going to show you guys what pieces we will be painting. Um, starting next week, I'm going to try doing the whole pre-recorded, doing a watch party thing, see if that works out a little bit better. Um, that way, maybe I'll be able to, to communicate with you guys in a little bit more real-time manner instead of being like, I can't tell if you guys are posting or not. Um, that's, that's one of the downfalls uh, that I'm finding on this uh, Facebook Live is my Facebook Live doesn't scroll the comments like I see going on on some of the other people's Facebook Lives. Uh, if you guys have any tips or tricks about that, let me know and I'll see if I can't fix that. Okay, so getting into it, there's a couple different ways that you can base coat pieces. And basically what that is is when you have a blank piece of bisque. I'm going to pick up one. When you have a blank piece of bisque, bisque is really porous, so it sucks in the color. So if you try uh, painting with your color right away, your, your color ends up blotchy and you end up hating life because your, your piece isn't coming out, the, the colors aren't blending, and you don't have time to move the, the paint around, and you just end up hating life. So we always, ba we always tell people, base coat your pieces before you start with your color. There's a couple different ways to base coat. Um, one is a pre-made base coat that you can get from Fashion Hues. And of course the um, words are going to be backwards because of the way the screen works. Um, but you can uh, base coat with Fashion Hues cream base coat and Fashion Hues white base coat. And what they recommend is to do two coats of the base coat either two coats of cream or two coats of white or a coat of cream and a coat of white. You can also, and then that helps fashion hues, colors blend and go on more smoothly. It's made to work with the fashion hue colors, but it can work with other paints as well. Then there is just straight up using craft paints, whatever brand you want. Um, this is a brand from a store that actually went out of business, so you can't get this one anymore. Um, but the store was bought by uh, Michael's Crafts, so Michael's Crafts brand is probably what this brand was. Um, but again, just a cream and a white, one coat of each color, or two coats of one color, whichever you prefer. I usually recommend doing a base coat of cream, because if you're painting cream on white, you can see if you've missed, and then doing a base coat of white, because again, if you're painting white on cream, you can see if you've missed, because you want to make sure that you have base coated your entire piece. Um, so those are the tried and true, everybody knows about those. Now I found a new secret recipe. It is am amazingly easy, and you only have to do one coat after you have your thing made. Um, this is using Mod Podge. Mod Podge. I have recently found out that Mod Podge is not the same thing as adding water to school glue. Yes, adding water to school glue makes decoupage, but it does not make Mod Podge. Mod Podge actually has like a, a varnish sealant in it. Um, hi Marla, uh, thanks for saying hi. I'm seeing some comments, so maybe this is working a little bit. Um, so yeah, um, but Mod Podge Matte is what you want, 
and then you're going to take some black acrylic paint so Mod Podge matte and black acrylic paint you're going to open up your Mod Podge I'm not going to do it to this one because I already made some and I don't want to over make it and get too far ahead of myself on, on supplies um, but you'll open up your Mod Podge there'll be enough room to add the amount of paint that you need to in the bottle I'm going to go ahead and do it to this one that I already have done but you basically just add in oh and this big bottle of acrylic black it's a four ounce bottle I believe yeah four ounce bottle I got this from the Dollar Tree four ounce bottle of acrylic black from the Dollar Tree for a dollar it makes it no more expensive for cheaper than buying the 50 cent bottles at Walmart um, and I know there's lots of ladies out there ladies and gentlemen in the ceramic world that are saying you know make sure you buy ceramic made paints and because it is a better quality absolutely it is a better quality but if you can't afford that don't let that stop you go ahead and buy the cheap stuff from uh, from Walmart or a little bit more expensive at, at Joanne Fabrics because that's what you can afford just start doing this and eventually you'll be able to get to a point where you're like you know what I'm gonna splurge on myself a little bit and I'm gonna buy the Mako Softies or the Doc Holidays or um, the Donna's stains or the fashion hue translucence um, oh and after you've put the paint in you put the put the lid back on and give it a really good shake you're gonna shake for a long time because you need to mix up that black into all of the Mod Podge um, but just get started buy the cheap stuff if you need to and don't be afraid the cheap stuff will actually still look good um, you might need to do a, a coat or two more um, than, than what the good stuff will do you, you can tell a little bit of a difference like if you have been in it for a long time you can tell the difference between uh, uh, the cheap paint and the paint that's made for ceramics you'll be able to tell the difference after a while um, but don't let that stop you from getting started uh, and some people you know you don't have a, a place that's close enough to make it um, affordable to either go and get it or to have it shipped in so you know don't be afraid um, but once you get this good and mixed and you'll, you'll be able to see it starting you'll be able to see it starting to mix by looking through the bottle and you'll see it mixing and you want it to be kind of a dark gray to almost a black so here is what it looks like once it's all mixed up and then you will just paint this on and that's your base coat you, you cut out a whole step you don't have to do two coats of something and wait for two coats to dry because in between coats you have to wait for it to dry so you can do this it doesn't take long to dry once it's dry you're ready to start painting um, then the other thing is a, a color wash or an antiquing whichever you want to call it I'm gonna turn the camera down so that it's facing my workbench so you guys can actually see it the color wash I'm gonna show you step by step because I already have one made this is a black wash um, that I really made a mistake on and I kind of want you guys to sort of see the um, after effects of the mistake it was hilarious um, but I'm gonna kind of make a reddish brown wash tonight and I'll step you through that and then after this I will kind of go through the pieces that we're gonna be painting for the haunted village um, I'm gonna go over some craft materials that you might want to start collecting so that you're ready to do this if you want to work along with us um, and I tried to make sure that everything that I got was either easily purchased at like a big box store like Walmart or the the Dollar Tree or like um, 
um, Dollar General, um, Family Dollar, those kind of places. I tried to make sure that anything I got was easily and readily accessible across the board. Um, so, okay, I'm going to turn the camera down now so that you guys aren't looking at me and you'll be looking at my beautiful mess. Okay. Ah, what are you doing? My camera thinks I'm rotating it. There we go. Okay. I don't know if you guys could see all this splatter. Last night when I made my practice batch of ant antiquing wash solution, um, I, I, I did a bit too much. And when I opened the bottle, it sprayed all over here. It sprayed up onto the wall behind me. I was a complete and utter mess. Um, and then I also realized after all that, I had my paper on the wrong side. This is the flat side of the freezer paper. I normally try to work on the glossy, waxy side of the freezer paper because things don't stick to the glossy, waxy side. Okay, so for a wash or a antiquing solution, whatever you guys want to call it, you're going to need some water. And I went ahead and got distilled just so I didn't have gunk floating around in my water. You're going to think this is very, very weird, but jet dry, jet dry finish, or finish jet dry, whichever way you want to say it. The rinse aid. Some paint of color of your choice. Um, most people do, do black or a really dark brown for their antiquing solution or their washes and a bottle to put it in. This is a bottle that I got in a two pack from the Dollar Tree. So it's, it's you know, again, affordable. And take that lid off. This is gonna be mind blowing, just absolutely mind blowing. So you're going to pour in about 50% water Okay. I just dropped that lid. Oh well, it can stay there. And then just enough finish. You want to be careful with this. This is the part that I messed up on. I put too much finish in there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Well, of course you can't see it because I don't have it on the screen. Okay, but you just want it just barely tinted blue. Okay, if you do too much finish, when you go to shake it up and you go to open your lid, the, the bubbles that the finish creates cause pressure and you end up with a, a splurting, exploding can of paint wash. So just a little bit and then I'm going to put the lid on and just kind of give it a good swirl to make sure it's in there. Now the reason why you're using the finish, it's um, a flow aid. It helps things flow better. Um, you can use, if you don't have finish for your dishwasher, if there's another brand that you have, you can use that. You can use uh, a couple drops of dish soap, you can use um, flow, uh, from, the, from the craft stores, Liquitex Flow Aid, um, but that's a little bit more expensive. Um, there was one other, oh, um, Pledge Floor, Clair, Floor Care, you can use that as well as a Flow Aid. But this is just to kind of help the, the paint and the color go over your, your product, your project at the end. And then you'll take your paint color of choice and you'll pour in. That is probably not going to be enough, but we'll see. And then you kind of shake it up. See all those bubbles in there? That's what I was talking about. That is creating pressure in this bottle. And if I'm not careful, it's going to explode. 
So, kind of like tapping down a a Coke can. I'm trying to release the pressure slowly. Okay, I think we're good. All right. I need a paintbrush. All right. Ah, oh, that's too big. There we go. This one will work. Now I'm going to just kind of test out the color. All right. I want just a little bit more red in there. That was probably a lot more red, but that's okay. And I'm going to darken it up just a little bit more, so I'm just going to put a drop of black paint in there. And now I'm going to mix it up again. Oh, you can feel, when you're, when you're shaking it, you can feel the pressure building up in there from the flow aid. So be careful. And I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Okay, while that's sitting, because I don't want to have this spraying all over my camera or all over my wall again, I'm going to go over um, some of the craft items that you might, um, so, okay, some of the pressure has come down in the bottle, so I'm going to try opening it. Go real slow. See, it's, it's splurting. But again, the uh, finish is for the flow aid so that when you're painting it on your piece, it will kind of run and get into all of the nooks and crannies. Okay, I like that color much better. Um, so if you want to have these made and ready to go, you'll need a bottle, you'll need water, you'll need some sort of flow aid. So jet dry finish or finish jet dry, however you want to say that name. Um, pledge floor care, uh, a couple drops of dish soap, something to that effect. It's just to help keep the paint moving as it's going over and filling into the nooks and crannies of your piece. Um, that would be one thing that you'll want to have made up. Um, black and uh, reddish brown is what I'm going to be using. You can use whatever color you want as a wash. Um, this reddish brown, just so you know, was red iron oxide from Delta Ceramicote. The black was Nicole's black. Or Acroology Premium Acrylic Paint Black from Dollar Tree. These ones are a little harder to find at Dollar Trees. You kind of have to go to a bigger Dollar Tree to get this size. Um, it's about the only size that's worth spending a dollar on because all the other ones are smaller than either, they're either a three ounce or a one point something ounce. And if you're going to be spending a dollar, you might as well go to Walmart and get two bottles for 50 cents. Okay. Then the Mod Podge. Mod Podge you can get at Dollar Tree, but for three cents less, you can go to Walmart and get the exact same size. So it's up to you. If you're already at Dollar Tree buying some stuff, throw in some Mod Podge because you're going to spend more than three cents in time and gas to get to a Walmart to, to, to get the Mod Podge. So get it at whatever place you're at. Not a big deal. Okay? And you want matte. You want to make sure it's the yellow label that says matte. You don't want the glossy for your base coat. Okay, so...